So good afternoon everyone. So hi, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the fourth problem solving session for this course, Phase 2 Energy Conversion. So last week uh, on Saturday, I was not able to take the session. So I got it rescheduled on today, on Monday. So we will be discussing uh, the previous year questions. And then uh, I have added one or two questions from my side. We will try to solve those. And then that's all will be for today's session. So welcome everyone to the course Ways to Energy Conversion. The professor, uh, the instructor is Professor P. Mondol from Department of Chemical Engineering, IIT Roorkee, and I am one of the TA for this course. Uh, my name is Asma Parveen, and I am a and I am a PhD scholar in IIT Kanpur. So week four, uh, there was five lectures. I think the first two lectures was about uh, uh, tutorial on gasification and paralysis. And then next two lectures was about uh, uh, densification of the ways to make uh, briquettes. And uh, the last one was about the uh, uh, thermal efficiency. It was about uh, improving the efficiency of uh, uh, waste processing plants. So just give me a minute. <clears throat> So the third lecture was about uh, densification of solids. So densification is the process in which the density of the waste is increased so that it can be handled uh, proper, properly and also it can be used easily. So uh, these are the mechanism and then uh, there are two types of uh, the end product which we get. If the dia is greater than 3 cm then it is called as briquettes and if it is smaller then it is called as pellets. So based upon the pressure used, the uh, compaction or we can say the pressure which we are using it is of three types. High pressure, medium pressure or, or low pressure. Generally, in high pressure compaction, uh, binders are not needed, but for medium or low pressure compaction, binder will be need, uh, needed to bind the waste into pellets or briquettes. So, uh, so these are the processes, and this uh, this is one of the uh, no, this is a piston press to make the briquettes, and next we have screw press, and these are some of the advantages and introduction. Please go through this in the video lecture so next is the important bracketing for uh, processes so uh, for low low press, uh, pressure operation in which the pressure is low uh, some sh uh, sh sort of binders are used to bind the waste so it can be organic binders like bitumen and molasses or it can be an inorganic binder like cement or lime 
so this is the comparison for the different densification process and then after uh, densification uh, there was introduction for carbonization so carbonization is partial paralysis uh, it can be done to the already formed uh, briquettes or the waste can be first carbonized and then briquetting can be done so uh, as I so, uh, tell, told that after the carbonization either briquetting can be done or uh, first briquetting can be done followed by carbonization. So these are some of the, uh, uh, it is a study for pine needle in which uh, biochar was produced, char and uh, uh, second and uh, the third column shows the difference between the needle char and the briquettes formed. So let's move to the next fourth uh, lecture was about uh, uh, carbonization only it was uh, the follow-up after that so uh, there are types of reactor different types of reactor and which are based on the what type of material are to be carbonized and this is these are the some of the reactor and after the carbonization and briquetting some uh, handling uh, tests are done to characterize the form bracket and some fuel characteristics are done like heating value size and shape so first we will see the handling characteristic first is the density so <clears throat> the upper limit for density is set is set at about 1500 kilograms per meter cube and generally in high pre pressure processes the brickets are made in the range of 12 to 1400 kilograms per meter cube Next, after density, it is the friability. It is the measurement to uh, resistance of the briquette to mechanical action, which can be, uh, they can be exposed to these uh, while handling and transportation. So, the test for friability is done by putting the briquettes in a drum or by uh, dropping it uh, these briquettes from some specified heights, height for multiple times and uh, after this, the samples are screened and the fraction retained is used to find out the briquettes uh, friability. So, if the friability index is zero, then it indicates the briquettes formed are of not good quality and they will disintegrate in, uh, completely after some time. So, friability should be high. Next is resistance to humidity. So, uh, as we know, if we keep something on the air, then in air there is moisture present. So, these briquettes will absorb the moisture. So, also the briquettes will absorb the moisture and their lifespan, life uh, uh, time will decrease. So, they are uh, kept under cover conditions. So, the test to uh, now test the humid resistance to humidity is tested by immersion test in which the briquettes are put in water and elongation or swelling of the in the size of the briquettes is measured after some time. Uh, another test for uh, resistance to humidity is done by uh, subjecting the briquettes to humid air, air for some time and after uh, generally 21 days uh, and uh, at 20 degrees centigrade, centigrade, uh, degree centigrade and 95 percent humidity if the elongation is less than 30 percent then it is acceptable and if it is less than 20% then it will be ideal. But if elongation is more than 30% then that briquette is not of that good quality. Next is the heating value. So heating value uh, is a, uh, can be determined by bomb calorimeter. So we have read also in the first week uh, that bomb calorimeter is used to find out the heating value of the waste. So these are the formula which we will be using uh, also in the assignment questions to find out the heating value of the waste. So these are some of the applications. It can be used for uh, heating the boilers or it can be used for heating in colder areas or it can also be used in a biomass gasifiers to generate power. So these are some of the burning equipments and here it is a manual briquette machine in which uh, this figure shows uh, the machine and here the briquettes which are formed from that machine. Uh, in this also the briquette I think there will be a numerical uh, for calculation of briquette force. So we will uh, see that also and 
let's go quickly to the last module so this is the last one so the last lecture was based on efficiency improvement of power plant and the first uh, uh, in this uh, week 4 there is only the first lecture and the subsequent lectures are in week 5 so i don't think there is any numerical based on this topic in this week assignment questions but let's just see so here uh, various type of efficiencies are talked about and we will see the questions directly uh, in the previous assignment questions so I have uh, attached the uh, slides uh, on the questions only so we will discuss it there so let's go directly to the questions so the first question is a numerical type the question is in a MSW gasifier flow rate and feed flow rate air flow rate and feed flow rate are this and this the msw does not contain any sulfur nitrogen or chloride the syn gas contains 35 percent carbon monoxide 3 percent carbon dioxide and 40 percent hydrogen and 5 percent methane and 3 percent acetylene calculate the rate of production of syn gas so we have to find out the rate of production of syn gas so four options are given so let me provide uh, the formula to find out the rate of production of syn gas So the formula to find out the rate of production of syn gases I have given that so it is uh, air flow rate upon uh, uh, 1 minus uh, the uh, percentages of the all the components in the syn gas into feeding rate uh, feeding rate of the waste. So I will give you all 5 minutes uh, please try to solve this question and write the correct option or whatever, whatever option you are getting in the chat box.
so let's see how to solve this question so we have given the air flow rate of Ten normals meter cube per second. We have been given the uh, percentage of the all the co com components in the cell gas, and we have been given the feeding rate as eight kilograms per second. So uh, the rate of sun gas production will be air flow rate is ten into point seven nine upon one minus CO is. Thirty-five per hundred point three five plus CO two is three, so zero point zero three. Hydrogen is forty, so point four. Uh, methane is five percent, so zero point zero five, and C two H two is three percent, so zero point zero three. So we have to subtract all these from one. Into the feeding rate that is eight. So we have to calculate this. So let me do the calculation. So the final value which we are getting is seven point. So let me write it here. Seven point zero five three six normal meter cubes per kg. So this is the rate of production of syn gas. So uh, this question is directly based on the formula so we need to remember this so how to find the fuel gas production we just have to put the uh, values for the uh, all the components in the sun gas and the air flow rate and feeding rate and then we can get the rate of sun gas production so the so we are getting 7.05 so the correct answer is b a uh, similar question was i think also there in the uh, tutorial huh? so you can also go and uh, uh, have a similar lecture okay let's go to the next question So this question is also a numerical and I think uh, a similar question was there in the tutorial also. So the question is pine needle is used to produce bio oil in a slow pyrolysis unit. The percentage of bio oil, char and gas is 40, 45 and 15 percent. The average molecular formula of the biochar is determined as this and for bio oil is this. Uh, the composition of the gas is as follows. It contains of 15% hydrogen, 44% CO2, 25% CO and 16% methane. Calculate the percentage of carbon converted to bio oil. So we have to find out the percentage of carbon which is being converted to bio oil. So I will give you all 10 minutes. So because it is a... Uh, uh, lengthy question so i'll give you all 10, 10 minutes please try to solve the question and write your uh, uh, option or value in the chat box and then we will see how to solve this
so I don't know why I'm not getting any answer. So let's see how to solve this question. So it is a similar question uh, uh, of what was there in the uh, tutorial for uh, I think this was for uh, classification. So let's see. So we have been given the percentage of uh, oil, char and gas which is produced. So sorry this is was on, based on paralysis. So let's first find out. Let's take 100 grams of pine needle as the basis. Because everything is given in percentage. Now it is given that, let's find out bio oil produced. So it is given that 40% is the bio oil. So 40% of 100 will be 40 grams. So it will be 40 gram. Similarly, char produced. It is 45%, so 45% of 100 will be 45 grams. And uh, last is the gas. So production of gas is 1500, sorry 15%, so 15% of 100 will be 15 grams. Also, the molecular weight of uh, biochar and bio oil is given. So, let's find out the sorry, molecular formula is given. Let's find out the molecular weight. So molecular weight of bio oil it is given as CH 0.56 O 0.28 and N 0.013 So molecular weight will be So we have one carbon atom and the molecular ma sorry atomic mass of carbon is 12 Again we have 0.56 moles of hydrogen Mass is 1.28 moles of oxygen, mass is 16 and 0.013 moles of nitrogen and mass per nitrogen is 14. So let's find out what is the molecular weight of the bio oil. So it's coming out to be 17.222 grams per mole. So we now know the uh, molecular weight and we also know how much of bio oil is produced so we can find out the number of moles of bio oil produced so number of moles of bio oil will be so we have 40 grams of the bio oil 40 by 17.222 it will give us Two point three double three two three moles. Similar calculation we will do for the char. So the
molecular weight of char will be so the formula is So this is the molecular formula for the char. So the molecular weight will be 12 plus 1.47 plus 0.36 into 16 plus 0 0.005 into 14. So let's see how much will be this. So it's coming out to be 19.2 grams per mole. So number of moles of char will be so I think it was 45 so char produced is 45 so it will be 45 upon 19.2 so it's coming out to be 19.3 so it is 2.332 moles similarly we will do for the gas so the gas composition which is given is so there was some percentage of hydrogen CO2 CO and methane let's see what it was So this is the gas composition given. So we have 15% of hydrogen, 44% of uh, CO2 and 25% of uh, CO and 16% of methane. So we will find out the average molecular weight of the gas. So we have 15% of H2 that will be 0 0.5, 0 0.15 into 2 because there is 2 moles plus uh, CO2 is 44% uh, so it will be 0 0.44 and the molecular weight of CO2 is also 44 that is uh, 32 plus 12 plus CO is 25% so 0.25 and into molecular weight of CO is uh, 16 plus 12 that will be 28 plus 16% so 0.16 into 
मॉलिकुलर वेट फॉर मिथेन विल बी ट्वेल्व प्लस फॉर सिक्सटीन सो दिस विल बी द एवरेज मॉलिकुलर वेट ऑफ द गैस सो वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग इन ग्राम्स पर मोन सो लेट्स लेट मी कैलकुलेट इट So it's coming out to be twenty nine point two two grams per mole. So now we will calculate the number of moles of the gas form. So it is. I think. molecular weight of the gas was given in the question okay so the amount of gas produced was 15% so it will be 15 given weight is 15 and molecular weight is 29.22 so this will give us the number of moles of gas produced That is point five one three. So now we will see how much carbon is present in bio oil, char, and gas. and we will find out the total carbon and then we will find out how much percentage of carbon is converted to bio oil so carbon present in bio oil so we'll have to go back so since this is the molecular formula for bio bio oil and we can see that in each mo mole of bio oil there is one mole of carbon so in 2.323 moles of bio oil there will be same moles of carbon so it is 2.323 this much moles of uh, uh, carbon is present in bio oil similarly we will find out how much of carbon is present in char and for char similar is the stoichiometric relation for one mole of the char one mole of carbon is present so for 2.332 moles it will be 2.332 moles of carbon present and we will similarly found carbon in gas for gas we can see that there is a uh, 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 one mole of carbon in one mole of co2 so for uh, 0.44 moles there will be 0.44 moles of carbon so it will be 0.44 in co again 0.25 and methane it is 0.16 into number of moles of gas it is i think 0.513 so we are going to find out the carbon present in gas so it is 0.44 plus 0.25 plus 0.16 into 0.513 so it is 0.436 moles so now we will find out the total carbon it is 2.323 plus 2.332 
प्लस पॉइंट फोर थ्री सिक्स so it is coming out to be 5.091 moles so the total number of moles of carbon in char bio oil and gas it is 5.091 this is the summation of carbon in all these three phases and we have to find out the percentage of carbon converted to bio oil so percentage of carbon converted to bio oil will be in bio oil we have uh, 2.323 moles of carbon total we have 5.091 into 100 will give us the percentage so it's coming out to be 0.0, .0 So this much percentage of carbon is converted to bio oil and the rest is present in char and the gas. So let's see uh, which option we are getting. So C, we are getting 40.46 percentage. So this question is also straightforward. The thing is we have to do lots of calculation. We have to find out the number of moles of the bio oil. We have to find out the number of moles of the char and number of uh, moles of the gas present. And based upon the molecular formula which is given, we can find out how many numbers of moles of carbon is in the bio oil, in the char and gas. And by using this relation, we can find out how much percentage of the carbon is converted to bio oil. So let's move to the next question. I hope this question is clear to everyone. If anyone have any doubt, you can just unmute yourself and ask or either you can write your doubt in the chat box. So, so the next question is, which of the following statement is not true about densification? So, four statements are given. We have to find out which one is not correct. So, first one is, it provides simple mechanical handling and feeding. B is, it provides uniform combustion in boiler. It reduces cost of transportation. Or D, it increases dust production. So I'll give you all three minutes. Just take your time and write the correct option in the chat box and then only we'll proceed because I'm not getting any uh, responses from your side. Please try to uh, participate in these questions. These questions will help you to solve the uh, assignment questions as well as the questions which will be coming in the exam. Sorry. So I'll give you all three minutes. Just take your time and write the answer in the chat box.
So let's see which is the correct answer. So D is the correct answer as we can see from this slide uh, that uh, densification reduces the uh, dust production. Just give me a minute. So as we can see from the third point for the advantages that uh, densification reduces the dust production. So in the question, uh, all the three first three options are correct. Only the last one that it increases the dust production is wrong. So D is the correct answer. So let's move to the next question. So the question is the most important factors factor of factors in the binding process of biomass densification are select the most suitable option. So only one option is correct. So we have to select which are the most important factors for binding of the biomass. So first is moisture content, next is bulk density, C is thermal properties or D all of the above. So again I will give you all three minutes. Just take your time and write the correct option in the chat box.
so let's see which is the correct answer so moisture content bulk density uh, and thermal properties all three are important uh, for the binding process of biomass densification so we can see uh, the important physical uh, properties are moisture content bulk density void volume and thermal properties these are important for binding process uh, because moisture content should not be very high. So uh, uh, it should not be very high such that uh, the binding is not proper and uh, also uh, uh, the void volume, bulk density and thermal properties all these are important for the binding process of uh, uh, biomass densification. Let's move to the next question. Based on compaction, the types of briquetting technologies are A. High pressure compaction B. Low pressure compaction with a binder C. Medium pressure with a heating device or D. All of the above Again, we have to uh, find out the most suitable option So again, I will give you all 3 minutes Just take your time and write the correct option in the chat box
so the correct answer is d based on compaction there are three types of briquetting technology that is low pressure high pressure and medium pressure compaction so d is the correct answer also from this slide we can see that the briquetting technology can be of three types based on compaction that is the high pressure compaction medium pressure compaction with a heating device and third that is low pressure compaction with a binder so let's move to the next question so the question is mechanical piston presses and pellet press uh, pressures make briquettes with density in the range of so piston press and pellet press makes briquette we have to write down what is the density of the briquettes which are formed so four options are given so we have to find out which is the correct one so again i will give you all three minutes just take your time and write the correct option in the chat box
also so the correct answer is a uh, that the mechanical piston processes uh, make brickets with density in the range of 12 to 1400 kilograms per meter cube we can see this in uh, in this uh, a point also that high pressure processes such as uh, mechanical piston pre presses uh, makes brickets in the range of 1200 to 1400 kilograms per meter cube of the density so let's move to the next question so these are the direct statement questions from the slide i have just uh, 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 added that slide with the uh, with that question so next question is friability index value of sorry das indicates that brickets disintegrated entirely after a certain time it is 1 2 0 or 10 so again i will give you all 10 minutes just take your time and write the correct option in the chat box
so friability frab index of zero indicates that the bracket will disintegrate completely after a certain time so c is the correct answer so we can see from this point also that friability fri index of zero indicates the brickets are disintegrated entirely after a certain time which clearly indicates the brickets are of not good quality so c is the correct answer so let's move to the next question so it is a numerical type question a 10 ton hydraulic jack was used to lift the machine components and compress the brickets the compaction force can be calculated using pressure. Pressure read from the pressure gauge connected to the hydraulic jack is this. That is 17.5 kN per meter square. The machine has 30 moulds and the diameter of bricket sample is 25 mm. Calculate the compaction force. So we have been given the pressure and we have been given the number of moulds and dia of each uh, bricket sample and from this we have to find out the force so force is nothing it is a compaction pressure into the contact area so i'll give you all uh, seven minutes to solve this question and write the correct answer in the chat box
So let's see how to solve this question. So we have been given the compact, sorry. Compaction pressure is given as 17.5 kilonewtons per meter square and as we know force is pressure into area. So we have to find out the contact area. So it will be pi by 4 into d square that is the dia of each mole that is 25 mm so we will convert mm into meters so it will be into 10 raise per minus 3 this is the area of each mole we have 30 moles so it will be into 30 so this will be the contact area. So it's coming out to be 0 0.015 meter square. So we got the contact area and compaction pressure is given. So the compaction force will be pressure which is 17.5. It is kilonewtons per meter square into the contact area which is 0 0.015 meter square. So 0 0.015. So it's coming out to be 0 0.26 uh, 25 kilonewtons. So if you multiply it by 1000 it will be 262. 0.5 newtons okay I think I have done some mistake So I think I have done some calculation mistake that's why I am not getting the value so let me recalculate it. So, so I have approximated it so if we add keep it without of approximation So it's coming out to be 0 0.01472 meter square. So 14. So 
so now it's coming out to be 2576 that is 257.6 newton so d is the correct answer so in this question compaction pressure was given and we have to find out the contact area which will be a, a cross sectional area of each mold into the number of molds and if you multiply this contact area by the compaction pressure we will get the compaction force so let's move to the next question so the question is the overall energy production from a waste to energy plant depends upon select the most suitable option so the first is heating value of the waste b thermal efficiency of the boiler c efficiency of the turbine generator or d all of the above so i'll give you all two minutes just take your time and write the correct op option in the chat box So the correct answer is C. So the correct answer is uh, D all of the above. So the overall heat energy production from a waste to energy plant depends upon the heating value of the waste, efficiency of the thermal processing unit, thermal efficiency of the boiler, efficiency of the turbine generator. Uh, energy requirement of the air pollution control system and any other place and any other in place energy uses so all the three options which is given that is heating value of the waste thermal efficiency of the boiler and efficiency of the turbine generator all these contribute to the overall energy production from a waste to energy plant so d is the correct answer
So let's move to the next question. So the question is the thermal efficiency of waste to energy power plant can be expressed as so we have to find out the thermal efficiency formula so four options are given so we have to find out which is the correct uh, formula for the thermal efficiency of waste to energy power plant so again i will give you all two minutes just take your time and write the correct option in the chat box So uh, the thermal uh, the formula to find out the thermal efficiency is here. So B is the correct answer that thermal efficiency is the ratio of energy generated into time to the quantity of fuel that is Mc and Cv is the calorific value of the feed. So B is the correct answer. So let's move to the next question. So this is the last question. The question is ideal baritone cycle can be described by the process step steps. So four steps are given isobaric adiabatic isobaric adiabatic. So four uh, uh, different steps are given A, B, C, D. B is isothermal isobaric again isothermal isobaric or isobaric isenotropic isobaric isenotropic process or isentropic isobaric or isentropic isobaric process. So this question is from the last lecture. 
so again i will give you all two minutes just take your time and write the correct option in the chat box so d is the correct answer so this is the slide from the lecture for baryton cycle for gas turbine it is a a cycle which consists of isentropic process followed by isobaric process and again isentropic and isobaric process so d is the correct answer so these are the questions for uh, assignment 4 so if anyone have any doubt then please uh, unmute yourself or write in chat box or otherwise we can end the session here. So I think there is no questions. So thank you so much for joining. The next session will be on Saturday only from 3 to 5 p.m. as usual. So have a nice day. Thank you.